All right, y'all, we're jumping right in. It is Matt and Matt here. Today we are making match boxes. All right, today, making match boxes. Here's sort of what we're looking at here. If you're here, because you saw I just shared this on Instagram or something, you saw this process video, you're on the newsletter, you may have seen these up on Instagram. I was sharing them one by one. These are my 10 favorite albums from 2017. Sort of slowly rolling them out one by one. Um, starting at 10 and rolling up to, to number one. So I was sharing these. I had a lot of people asking, how was I going about making these? If they're actually printed, if they're mock-ups and whatnot. Um, and for the most part, they're it's hard to answer because yes, they are they're they're digital mockups, but I'm not like creating a the box and matches entirely from scratch. I'm using some photo references that I took myself. But I want to sort of go in and show how I got some of these print techniques, uh, how I go from vector to these sort of raster effects and whatnot. Um, I'm gonna sort of kick things off and just sort of show you where how I start out with some of these things, you know and just get things rolling. So let's just pop on in to one of the projects here. So um, I've got all sorts of stuff going on in these folders and I'll sort of go through some of these things along the way, but to start things off, uh, we can just check out some of the artwork and, and see how things sort of started out. I've got this Illustrator document here and I drew all these sketches fairly quickly on my iPad. Just sort of sketched things out, had a few ideas, ran with them, and just brought them into, into Illustrator. Um, I guess I should probably back step for a second though. You can see everything sort of set up in this square. Uh, the image I just showed you earlier, that it was in this exact layout. Um, when I decided to do some matchboxes, I I sort of reverse engineered a little bit, and I was like, you know, in the end, it'd be sick to put everything in a square and, and have it set up just like this. And so that's what I did. I sort of like made I made all, I just did shapes, and I was like, then I sort of figured out some of the details later. I was like, you know, um, uh, I sort of knew which designs could fit in where, and I just I just went from there. Anyways. Here's sort of the basic layout of stuff. And I knew I couldn't like design some of these sideways, so then I just like sort of rearranged them um, um, and worked from there. You can see they're not directly in the order, but I can I preserved the other things just so I could put them in place later. Anyways, so I have I have all this stuff here. Um, before I yeah, you know, I'll just kind of keep rolling here. So Today, the one I want to highlight that we're going to be doing is the dam one. And I'm going to just pull it up once again, just so we can get a good idea of what the heck this thing ended up looking like and where we're going to go. I'm not going to guarantee it's going to go as detailed, just because I'm recreating this as best as I can. And... You know, I just want to be quick and efficient with it. You can be as slow and tedious as you want, but I just want to get the basic ideas across, and then you can take it from there. So this is what we're starting with. This is where we're going. I'll go back into this Illustrator file and just show you how I had set things up. So, uh, yeah, I'm not like nece necessarily a tech geek or anything. But like when it comes to like software and like designing and stuff, like I, I just want to be comfy. I like things set up the way I like them. And so if you look in here, man, I've like deleted my whole toolbar. I I just like know the shortcuts just because like that's how I like it. So if I if I'm going through here and I'm using shortcuts and I like forget to mention something, pff, heckle me on 
Twitter comment below whatever and ask like Matt what the hell did you do at minute three or whatever uh, I'm super down to answer that question so just getting back into like how I set things up you're gonna see I have a lot of layers here but they all make sense so I, I put them in order of the albums because that's sort of like how I built them uh, I'm gonna turn on all of these sort of um, all of the working ones now just so you can see sort of where my head was at and what I was doing and we'll see how see if I discover anything new along the way but so I just toggled on all of the layers that are live they're working there's no there's no effects done to them yet you know uh, some of them might have live text if I go into flower boy oh nope I expanded this one but the, the sort of side here, you know, I've got live text. I could change this, you know. Um, and, you know, this is using Wolf by Oh No, rad typeface. So um, the way I set this up is if it doesn't have an asterisk in front of it, then it's live. If it does have the asterisk, then I start to expand stuff and uh, apply some effects and and get rid of that live text and strokes or whatever it may be. So from there, we can, um, you know, I'd love to go into all these things and like showcase like how I had done a lot of stuff, but that's just, you know, I don't want this to be a two hour episode. I just want to go in, show you what I did, get out. So we're going to start here with Dan. This is the focus. And I, I, I should say now, man, all these things are massive. Uh, well, I say massive, but it, some people it might seem massive, some people might not. I mean, if I zoom all the way out to Illustrator Artboard, I mean, it's not pretty big. Uh, it's definitely not too actual size, like the size of a, like an actual matchbook would be. Anyways. The reason I made them so big is just because I knew when I brought them into, into Photoshop and when I was dealing with all that stuff, I wanted to be as big as possible because I was going to blow them up on, uh, to fit the full frame of Instagram posts and whatnot. So I'd rather scale down than you know ruin something trying to scale it up. Needless to say, this is my live version. I'm going to turn on the other version. You can see what the heck it turned into when it's expanded. And there's not much difference, you know. And let me hide the thing. Beneath. I'm going to hide everything for the time being. Um, and if you see me right now, I, I don't even know when I learned this, this is pretty recent. If I, if I hold option and I click on the, the eye, it'll shut off everything except that one I've got on, um, or do the inverse, you know, turn on everything. <laughs> Comes in handy when you're dealing with a bunch of flares. Okay, so here's the, the expanded version and with all of the effects and whatnot. And you can see some of the types getting wonky, lines are getting wobbly, and, uh, I'm not gonna skip over that. Don't worry. I'm gonna. We're gonna go in. We're gonna just recreate what I had done here, and we're gonna go into this process. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer. I'm gonna do the same thing I usually do with the other ones. So I'm gonna du double asterisk so I know what the hell I'm doing and not like dealing with my other file there. But um. The way I set these up, you know, to, to make it easier for me later when I'm bringing this into Photoshop is I, I try to separate things as they would whenever they're actually going to be printed or something. So I'm trying to think ahead as I'm doing this and trying to think in a sort of in a print process. So I'm going to, I just want to open this up real quick just to where you can see it. When, I, when I'm working with the design, I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know what? This isn't gonna be. This isn't printed on red paper. It's printed on white paper. It's just a flood of red on there, and then they're throwing the black on top, and the the sort of gold foiling is is last. So, and that's exactly how I'm gonna treat it. I'm just gonna select everything right now. Shift Command O. That's gonna outline my type, make it easy, and then. So exactly, going back to what I was just saying, the red is a flood, the paper is white, so I'm going to knock out all the white from the red. And 
up here at the top, uh, select similar objects and select all the things you know of, of that fill or stroke or just you know the similar properties. Select all those. Hit Command Eight. Ah, oh, goodness, can't make a compound path of objects. Up. Oh, I got groups going on here. Just Shift Command G. Press the hell out of it. Ungroup everything. Now Command A. Oh, what is going on? Don't know what this is doing. Um, I run into stuff like this all the time. Just click stuff till you figure it out. So, oh, wait, what is it? This thing. Gotcha. The, the ungrouping wasn't working because it was selecting just that background circle. Anyways, select all those things again. Command 8. Oh, what the hell? Now merge them? Command 8. Okay. Um, so I've just merged them, unite via Pathfinder, then I hit Command-8. The reason I'm hitting Command-8 at the end is because um, if I go up to Object, and I'm sorry man, I've already, I've already screwed this video. I cropped off the very top of the video, I'm sorry. But if you pay attention and you listen to my voice, you'll know what's going on. Uh, if you go up to object at the top and you, where is it, path, where, oh, down here, compound path. Uh, the reason I'm doing this and I'm doing uh, command eight, what I was just telling you earlier, is because uh, I've got all these loose shapes. And if I try to subtract it from the red background later, it's just, it's going to subtract like one of them. Uh, so I make a compound path, it treats them all as a single thing. Then when I select this, I can uh, minus front. So whatever's in front is subtracted from there. I just lost some of my stuff, but I hit shift command left bracket. What is this? What is going on today? Um, uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm deleting that and just pasting it on the front. Whatever is going on, it didn't want me to move it to the back. Doesn't even matter. So, I have, what is going on here? I should have just ungrouped everything earlier. I had a bunch of stuff grouped and I'm running into issues now. Doesn't matter. Let's re. I need to get all the reds together because I'm missing this one K down here. Don't. I just want to lose stuff in the hand and whatnot. You could just see it all selected. So I'm gonna merge them again. Do Command A because I've got like, you know, counters and floating pieces. Now all the reds together. Got that out of the way. Uh, now I'm gonna do the same thing with the blacks. You know, select all the blacks. And of course, this is like a slightly different black or something. And so I'm gonna select that too. Um, add it all together. Command A. Cool, cool. Um, oh, goodness. I keep forgetting how I made this dang file. I'm just taking a step back. I gotta go to the damn text and, and outline it. You know, I've got that outline now. I can, um, I can ungroup it all. I've got, so now I've got all this stuff. And you know, it's probably easiest. I should just do all the gold first. Combine it all. Command A. Why is some of this? Oh, this is another. All right, are we good now? See, I should. Usually, what I'll do to test if I'm good is I'll select everything, and if I see there's strokes still, then I'm not. And I've, of course, I don't notice earlier because I'm a dummy. 
is uh, I've still got these things back here. Got my little icons. And I did a little giveaway on Instagram. I was giving away uh, auction one of my typefaces. If you could like notice little things in the designs. And uh, on this one, I was stoked. Someone got the K dot reference. That was cool. Um, I, I added these little things in there. You know, I got, you know, this probably isn't like a good kung fu weapon or anything. Kung fu, you think like fighting with your hands, but you know, this is like a little ninja sort of dagger sword thing. So I was like, Kung Fu Kenny, King Kendrick. No one got those references. It doesn't matter. My, my feelings aren't hurt. Just a little bit, but whatever. Anyways, let's go back. Select everything, merge it all, Command A, good to go. Now I gotta do the same thing with the blacks. These once again, I'm just gonna do these separately. Merge them, command A. Get these together now. Cool, cool. All right. If that wasn't a workout, now we've gotta roughen some things up. And so, I can do a lot of these things all at once. I just apply the same effect to all of them. But, the thing is, I want to do these while they're... I will, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to make some swatches first. Just to preserve a few colors. Now I'm hitting M to get the rectangle tool. Probably don't need a black swatch, but whatever. Get my gold. And you know, these things might change later. They, well, they do change in Photoshop later, but um, just in terms of getting the design back later. So, I'm going to select all these. I'm going to make them black. Can't see anything I'm doing, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to go up to the top effect. Once again, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm so sorry. I cut off the top, but I'm in effect. I'm going to go to distort and transform. Go to zigzag. Zigzag it up. Preview. <sighs> Looking good already. Hit smooth. And uh, yeah, we want this. We want this absolute, but we want, we only need like a pixel on there. And then we want this to go. Keep it at like ten. Um. Ah, uh, zigzag. What am I doing? Effect. I'm off my game today. I said zigzag, but I meant roughing. We're gonna go through the same thing. Again, effect, rough, distort and transform, roughing. Absolute, one pixel. Actually, do we? Yeah, we're gonna go one pixel, um, 10 per inch, whatever the hell that means. And we're gonna make it smooth. Hit okay. Uh, and you can see some things are getting real wonky, and this is what I'm all about. So I'm going to expand the appearance, surf outlines everything, and then go to uh, blur. We're gonna we're gonna add a little bit of blur to here. And I can't remember which one I did with this. I think I only did two pixels. You know, again, and this is all dependent on the size you're working at. I'm working very large. Um, and part of it is just so I can like use just some of these whole numbers and whatnot, makes it easy. But I think I went two on this one because some of this text is pretty small. Some of them I went three. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to really lo loosen things up. Um, and so I'm gonna go to Object Expand experience, uh, Appearance again. And now they're like, I guess you can call them images at this point. You know, they're not like editable vector vector objects, but uh, at this point I can't go through and like select them all and like live trace them. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna live trace some stuff. So, but I'm gonna select with the, I'm gonna go with the background first because that way you can see what some stuff is happening. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna image trace it. And down here, I got this thing. I've I named this 001 years ago or something. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it, hit OK. This is just telling me my computer's gonna die by doing this. 
and I'll go I'll open up the live image trace options just so you can see what what some of these settings are at and you steal them do whatever the heck you want uh, these are just some it's super basic but I, I like it and it's just I use it for like everything anyways uh, I have the paths high because I want to get some of those details in there. Uh, but I have the noise really low because sometimes I'll do some grainy stuff. In this case, it doesn't come into play. Pff, I'm like, pff, no corners on there. I want this to be smooth as hell. Uh, and then probably the most important is ignore white. Nothing's more annoying than image tracing this dang thing. And it image traces like the white in there too. And you have to delete all that. Needless to say, these are my settings. This is what I use for a lot of things because I'm not image tracing a whole lot and when I am it's intended to be bad so whatever I'm gonna expand it now it's gonna make it you know vector vector objects once again I'm gonna I'm gonna just make it this red so now I've got these wonky lines and whatnot so exactly what I'm going for next up Let's let's just keep things in order the the print order. I'm gonna select the black stuff. Image trace, same thing. Just go through here. It's gonna do its thing. Expand it. Cool. Gold. Same thing, man. This one probably has the most detail. And you know, I just I didn't like go through and vector all these things. You know, maybe I already threw the the time lapse in there. Who knows? Uh, but I knew everything was going to get roughened up, so I was like, I don't have to go crazy with like how I vector all this stuff. But So I can expand this, shift it back to gold, and boom, we got like the basis of the design here. Um, everything's wonky, and that was the point, you know? We're losing details. It's supposed to look like ink is sort of, you know, sucking into that paper. And we'll add some more effects later and, and just just go from there. Uh, and I, I should even point this out. So in terms of how I'm setting this up is I've, I've got this guideline here and I knew this was going to be the, the end size of what I wanted. And, and I put like an 80 pixel bleed just in case I wanted to like move stuff. And I just did that on everything. It probably wasn't necessary. But I do it just so I have some of that safety area. So, and I, I'm going to use this blue line. This is what I'm going to like end up pasting into, into Photoshop. And I'll, I'll preserve the bleed on the graphics. So, now what I want to do is I want to get this blue. I want to get that box. That's my dimensions there. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hit Command Y just to make it easier on myself. And this, this is outline mode. You go to view, and I even, oh, GPU preview, I guess, would be the inverse. Um, I'm in outline mode, it shows all the outlines. I'm just gonna draw it over that box. If I get out of outline mode, you just see I just covered everything. Just, I'm gonna set it, it doesn't matter what color it is. It's going to copy that. Command C, and I can delete it. Now we're going to move into Photoshop. You might see some things you're not supposed to right now, but that's fine. I guess, no, this is, you can see this. I'm going to get into this in a moment. I'm going to make a new document. I'm just starting to set up my Photoshop stuff. New document, whatever I just copied, those dimensions are now on the clipboard. Hit enter. Just paste it down. And the reason I'm pasting this, despite it just taking up the whole area, is because the first thing I immediately start to do is, you know, I can't, I don't want to build just at this, to, like, within this box here because I want, I need shadows and stuff. You know, some things have matches sticking out. If I build it here, I'm going to run into some roadblocks. You know, some things, it's just, these aren't the end dimensions. So I get the crop tool, I hit C. Uh, holding option, I just like click and drag from the corner and, and just make my my document bigger. And from there, what I do is 
I have my rulers toggled. You can hit Command R if yours aren't. I I have this box, and I'm just dragging directly from the from the ruler, just dragging down. And uh, you know, before before I get too much further, I guess uh, if you if you don't have show transform controls on, what are you doing with your life? I get on so many people's Photoshop documents and stuff, and they just don't have this toggled on. And every time they're going up to like edit and like turning it on or something, I'm like, what are you doing? With your life, you gotta. This will change your life if you don't got this on. Um, anyways, I'm just I'm just snapping to this, and you and you might have to make sure that snapping is on. I think it's on by default, but even if you're winging, it doesn't matter. We're just Photoshopping a damn box. Anyways, I've got my box here. I'll just keep that now. Before I start like dra dragging stuff in, uh, I'll, I'll tell you about the box. You know how I make the box, and you probably saw earlier that I had an image here. I'm gonna open up Finder real quick, just where you can actually see what I'm working with. I've got a photo library. Before I did this, I like grabbed some boxes, and I just went and took some photographs of them. Uh, and as I was so this is the photograph we're working with here. I shot it. I, I just put it down on the table and I just slowly rotated it and took photos. Because the truth is, I didn't know what the layout of everything was going to be whenever I was first starting it. Like I was like, I, like, I want to make matchboxes. Don't know the shape, orientation or whatever. I was like, I may as well just take photos of these boxes and like whatever angles and just get sh natural shadows in the box so I could so I could have some choices later. And the reason I'm using this one here is because you know the the light is like directly at the top of this photo and I'm getting I have the box rotated so I could um to where the shadow wasn't completely 90 degrees down. To where it's coming at a nice angle and just felt more natural. So this is the image I'm using. I took a bunch of photos. I have the interior of the box uh, that I shot and I would like put matches in it. I ended up like reshooting photos just with my dang phone later of like other things because like I shot individual and play some pain in the ass. Anyways. So I I just started photoshopping some stuff. I made a I made an edit folder whenever I was like Whenever I got something and I could then manipulate it further, I, I preserved it. I had a vertical box that I liked. I liked the shadow uh, coming this way. And then I had a horizontal one, and those I used those as the basis from almost all the dang things. These were all the individual matches, which did not work. Uh, it looks, we'll just move on. Uh, and, oh yeah, so I did. Uh, oh, I, I used a... Did I use this image? I guess maybe I did. I'm using a different one for this demo, but we might, I don't know where we'll end up. Anyways, so I've got this image here, but I need it straight. I'm gonna go back to my crop tool. I hit C. Up here, you got the, you got a straighten tool. It's handy as heck. And all you have to do, it's like a, literally like a ruler. You just click and drag along like uh, a surface you think should be even and it's going to straighten it out for you hit enter and I'm good and now I would I would take a selection of this or like start working from here and like copy it into a new document I'm just going to close this because I've already got another one set up to where we can start moving and I paste it in and so I have it pasted here, and then you know the next job is to edit out all the dang graphics. And how I do that is fairly simple. Over here at the patch tool, and there, there's various methods you can clone, stamp, whatever. But this one's super straightforward. I might select this area, click and drag, and just go over here, or I might even just I don't know if this is going to work. 
We're just gonna try it. Sometimes if it's if it's good enough, let's just do this. Uh, I'll just select it. I'll go up to edit and fill. Do content aware. Sometimes it doesn't work because sometimes it might detect the text down here. Uh, and sometimes it just does weird stuff. I've got like a weird lighting thing change here. So uh, you just got to find what works for you. I'm not going to go through all of it because I think people are more interested in other stuff. If you are interested in this, let me know. I'll, I'll geek out about this stuff. Anyways, I made this one here. And now I've got to start to set up my box to then bring over and set up on my other document. But what I'm going to do actually is, and you know what, I've, uh, we'll just keep moving forward. I'm going to just drag this thing over. So this is the, this is the size that I know I need. So I brought it from Illustrator, brought it into Photoshop. So this is like, like I want my box to then be this size. Um, I wasn't gonna do it here. I'm just, I'm just gonna go into the other document. I don't want like 40 documents open. I'm just dragging this into the other document. to where I know what I'm doing. Closing this. Don't need it. And you know what? I was, this. I'm doing the damn album. This one's not ranked number one. Pff, great album. You should listen to it. You should read about it on Manila Folders. But by this point, I, I had a document. I made. I, mean, I already had like a template for myself. I could like easily change things. But I want to show you how I got to that point. So I have my box here. And first thing you're going to notice with me, I'm going to organize the hell out of this document because I think it does matter. And if you aren't organizing... You need to get your life together. You need to be naming stuff. I'm going to color coordinate shit. So buckle your seatbelt. You're going to notice right now that I named... I guess I'll leave it as shadow. Anyways, all I need to do is just set up my box. So uh, this is going to take two boxes, I think, to make this. Or... Like, th yeah, just two of these. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to duplicate it. I just hold Option, drag it up. Uh, and uh, I'm going to delete everything except for that section. So I, I just selected it. Shift, Command, I, invert the selection. Inverse selection. So I've just got this section here. Uh, the reason I did that is because I want to bump this over. Uh, just to where it fits within my guideline. I'm going to... I didn't, I didn't do any like skew correction or anything, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. Is I'm gonna hold, I'm holding command, I'm getting this white arrow, and that's gonna let me just adjust that corner. I'm holding shift, and it's gonna pull out. Hit enter. I've got some pretty straight lines here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a mask on here. That's another thing you notice here. I'm gonna use it. I use so many masks. I put mask on mask on mask. Uh, and I need I need it to be black because I want to I want to get rid of some stuff. You see, this is white. And so um, I've got a gradient. I see sort of where this line ends. I'm gonna just drag over. Let me hide this real quick. It's fine. Okay. So I just put a mask on here. You could see that I just just made it to where it's smoother connection there. Um, and at this point, I don't I don't really I don't need to preserve it because. I'm about to add on top of it now. I'm gonna bring my ga my guides back. It's command colon or semicolon, whichever way you want to look at it, really. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna copy this thing now. I'm gonna bring it up and get it to the proportion I need. Oops. And this is where I was a little skeptical. Earlier. I wasn't sure if this was gonna if it was gonna be too. Um, I might have to throw another box in the middle is what I'm trying to get at here. You know, just to just to really smooth some things out. And I feel like I'm going to kick myself in the ass because I just should have kept this box a little more square. If I, if I was a little more square with things, I wouldn't be like having to fix stuff later. Um, and if I'm being honest, 
I might just steal my box from the other document just so you can see a good one. Anyways, I'm gonna add another box here. I'm gonna put it above everything. I'm gonna put this in the center. And I'm gonna do the mask trick again. Mask, and I just, I just want the center of the box just to where things aren't wonky as heck. Um, and hey, you know, we're getting somewhere. It's not like the most beautiful thing ever, but something. Maybe I'll try to fix this corner, better align it. Same thing, same thing with this one. You know, it's not perfect. Maybe that's gonna help it. And it's gonna make it look more believable. So, I think I went too much there. Oh my goodness. Let's get this one. And all I'm doing here, I'm just, just figuring things out. You know, that's the main thing. You just gotta be here tinkering around, trying to just trying to get it right. So, I've got all these lined up. I'm just gonna select all of them. I'm gonna hit Command E to merge them. So I've got my box. And you're gonna notice that I've got some stuff repeating and it looks Photoshopped. And that's not what you want when you're doing these things. So I've just got the patch tool, I'm finding areas that are repeating themselves. And then I'm just dragging elsewhere, trying to switch things up. Uh, and a lot of this is going to get covered later, and you wouldn't have even noticed if I didn't do anything to it. But it's a good habit to have because you're going to make higher quality stuff later when it does matter. So I've got my box, and now I need to separate the shadow from the box itself. There are many reasons for this. And I'm going to bring you through them, <laughs> one at a time. So, I'm going to rename this because, I, you know, it's not even OCD. I, I hate getting handed files, and I don't know what the hell is what. No one might ever deal with these matchbooks, but if someone asks me, hey, can I see a file for that? I might send it to them, and I don't want them to be in La La Land trying to figure out what's what. So, I'm going to duplicate this now. I'm going to name this one box, and this is shadow, and I'm going to, what, you know, I'm going to show you what I would start to do, but then I'm just I'm going to take it in the other box. I don't want to sit here and spend too much time with some of these things. I'll show you how it's done, but I'm not going to sit here and go through all of it. Because um, really what I would do here now is uh, I'd be on the folder. I'd come in here and I would, with the pen tool, I'd come through and I would, you know, just get a whole selection of the thing. When I've got the selection, right click, create vector mask, and now I've got a vector mask here. So if I turn, if I, if I shut this off, I've got my vector mask. Um, and if it's your first time doing a vector mask or like you haven't used a new Photoshop or just something that's acting weird, uh, you might notice that it it does the opposite of what you do want. It, it, it masks out the thing you just circled. And so you just let you just get the background. That was happening to me. You have to you have to come in, you have to select it with the direct uh, or sorry, with the path selection tool or the direct one, and come up to the top. And, and make sure you're on combined shapes. If you're on subtract, uh, it's going to do what I was just talking about. So if it's on combine, it's, it's going to work the way you would anticipate. So a few reasons I use, the, use this method using a vector mask is, one, it's, it, it, once you get comfortable with it, it's quick. I'm not, I'm not brushing things out. and It's better than a lasso because I'm not free-for-alling it. And uh, you get good control. You know, I was working with multiple boxes, and whenever I needed to, I would just make a small adjustment. 
and I was like, oh, if I if I tuck this in here, I can I can make it look like a knot, like like this box was just bent a little bit. And that's literally what I was doing on this project. Um, I would just come in and I would just add a little irregularities. Because then later when I add in the details, I can make it look like, hey, this box was just bent right there. Um, and so th that's one advantage of the vector mask. The other is uh, if I double click on here, I can, and I have this selected now, I can add a feather. And so that's what I was doing next. I was adding a feather. It has a nice little softness to it. And then later when I turn on the background, I would add some adjustment filters. So this is where I'm going to segue and I'm jump over to my to my other box to where you can see what the heck I was doing. So I have shadow and box. This has the vector mask. This does not. So if when I shut these off, you see everything. But what I do from there is I, I add a gradient map. I just black and white the whole thing. I like gradient maps because rather than like just desaturating, it's like uh, you just get richer areas. You know, it feels a lot more true. So I do gradient map, just do it black to white, makes it black and white image. Then from there, I was, you know, I'm trying to get rid of the background. So I just sort of blow out the levels. And that's literally what's happening here. If I bring this back, this isn't normal. Uh, the, the sort of mids are changed here. But, you know, I bring it here. I, I'm sort of bringing it past the threshold to where I know that um, this, this is all going to be gone. I don't, I don't want any strand slight areas. And then from there, what I do is I, I add a, another layer. I usually name it extra white. And this is like my, my safety zone. I'm like, I don't, I want to make sure nothing is getting past there. So I'll just grab a gradient. Uh, I'll make it white and I, I just drag it in. I just click and this is, I'm doing this because I, like I said, I don't want any vignettes. I want nothing sort of peeking through to where like, if you're looking at this in like low light or on a different screen, like you're like, oh, that's weird. That's like a shadow coming to an, an abrupt end. Um, and so that's what I do. I'll add this in there. And I'm not, I'm not actually going to take all of these because you know, if I bring this over, it's not going to be the proportions of of this of the box I really need, which is that. So what I'm going to do is open up the other file, you know, the one I actually made for this, and steal the box. And then that'll give me an opportunity to sort of point out some stuff, point out some stuff to you that I'm going to go through and so you know what the heck you're getting yourself into. Okay, I've got this thing open. I'm going to close out of this thing because I don't need it open. I'm just make my computer run slower. I'm going to go into my working file. I have two because when I'm done, I'll make one that's quote unquote flat. It's not really flat. It's got like at least two layers, you know, in case I'm, it makes it easier to handle. I mean, this is 830 megabytes. It's not like the biggest file. I've worked with like eight gig files and stuff, but uh, it can really slow things down. You know, if you have like a, if you like that master file on the end, that thing was huffing and a puffing. So I'm going to go in here. I've got... Where is my box? So, I'm just going to bring over the things that you saw earlier. So I'm bringing over to be able to make this thing. I'm now realizing that I'm going to have to line these up, but this is just a tutorial. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be like crazy perfect. Um, so I've got my shadow. And then I'm 
here it's it's labeled base uh, but previously it was box so I'm going to bring this over and here it is you're probably like what the hell is going on um, let's just say I was working on this and I was working pretty quick um, and oh, it's all because of the extra texture I, there's there's some crazy stuff going on there you don't have to worry about it uh, I probably won't <laughs> that, that's like patchwork stuff anyways set this up uh, and you'll notice that the vector mask the vector mask isn't here I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that back over just to where you can just because I want you to be able to see yeah I, I want to build this from scratch quote unquote scratch to where you know what the heck I'm doing. Okay, so let's just line this better. Let's line this up now. I've got to find my box. And you wouldn't be doing this because you actually went through and <laughs> made everything and set it up. Uh, I'm doing it because I didn't right now. So... Cool. Now, I'm going to delete this extra texture. I'm going to rename this box. And I'm going to put this in a folder I can call it base. <laughs> um, the whole reason I'm doing all of this is because I want my shadow down here at the bottom. It's beneath everything. And then I want to keep all of that design within this box shape. You know, I've got that nice feather. I've got everything sort of aligned to here and set up how I want. And so now I can start to set up my other folders of how everything's going to go. At the very top, I'm going to have a dimension folder. I'm going to have a graphic folder. I'll get into the dimension one in a second. Graphic is where it's going to be at. And you're going to laugh because I'm making this thing green. But if I, if I go over here, it's going to be green probably too. Yeah. I've got my graphic folder. Do that so I know exactly <laughs> where I need to get to first. Um, and there's, there's all sorts of stuff going on here. But we're going to get into it. So, going back over here. First things first, making a rookie mistake already. I have not saved this file. While this is a tutorial and I'm just not like crazy serious about keeping this all, I'd be really annoyed if I, if this crash midway and I didn't get to finish the dang tutorial. So, um, we're going to name this O2. Save this document. Alright, let's get into the goods. We're going to open back up Illustrator and we're going to start bringing over the graphics. This is what we've been waiting for. Copy this. And when I get over back in Photoshop, I'm going to hit Command-0. Because I guess it's, I'm already there. I'm just going to back zoom out just so I can see things. I, mean, I hit Command-0 because I want one document directly in the center. So when I hit Command-V to paste it in, it's going to paste that graphic directly in the center there. So I've got my red place down. Boom, just like that ink. Open up Illustrator again. Come back. Get my second one, the black. Paste that in. And you know, you can see this paste it directly in this. Oh, wait. Oh, actually, I'm going to paste it again just so you can see what I'm doing. So I pasted it down. It's in the center. And I'm like, oh man, I need to now align this. And that can be annoying. Sometimes it works out because you're just you're trying to make this look intentionally bad. And so you uh, purposely are like eyeballing things. But. Say you're working with something that's pretty intricate and you want it to line up perfect. Um, I would draw a box. 
I'm doing it the size. I'm doing this size because I know I already have that size in the document to the guides, and I, I and I have it to no fill, and I hit the I hit the slash button to get rid of the fill there. Shout out Matt Yao showed me this. Um, now I'm going to select the black because I, I want it to actually paste in the center. So that, that box I drew has no fill. I selected it with the blacks. Go back over to Photoshop and paste it in. Command V. And what do you know? This time it's all lined up. So I'm going to get rid of the other one because this one's all lined up. May as well just keep it. Go back to Illustrator and I'm going to, I'm going to keep that thing because I don't know. I am just may as well. Why not? Go back over to Photoshop, paste this in. Now I've got, pff, I'm done. But really I've got to start adding some texture and whatnot. So, uh, but at least I've got it all here. Uh, I may as well just drag it into the graphic folder because that's where things are gonna eventually live. And so, what I want to do from here is, I've got a few things. First, I want to close out of Illustrator because this is for me personally. Is my computer? I I I feel like my computer's nice, but the truth is, is it can go gosh darn slow sometimes. And if I can preserve any bit of computer power, I'm damn well gonna do it. I'm even gonna quit. Uh, hopefully, quitting out of Illustrator wasn't a bad decision, but we'll find out right now. Come back to Photoshop. <laughs> Hopefully I've got all my stuff in here. So now I'm gonna start to set up my each each thing I need. And I've got three three layers of ink that are gonna be laid down in here. I'm just gonna create three folders. One, I'm gonna literally label red, black, and gold. Um, and I want the, I don't think these are actually, yeah, place them actually in the graphic folder. Um, you know, it, this is going to make it so easy to, to know what the heck I'm dealing with later by naming these. Simple as that. I've got the eyedropper, select this red. I know I want that color. I'm going to hold command. Uh, before I do that, before I do that. I, I added roughness in side of inside of Illustrator, but it's not as rough as I want it. So I'm gonna shut off all of these layers. And in, I like doing it in this. We're just gonna keep rolling. I'm gonna hit Command. I'm gonna save my document. I've got this PSD going. I'm gonna select this red thing and what I'm gonna do is so I just saved it and and the reason I shut off all of those graphics is because I wanted the texture of the box I wanted the freaking box texture um, and it honestly it might not be enough but for the sake of this it'll work so I saved it with with all the graphics shot I'm gonna turn this on now I'm gonna go up to filter I'm in filter now I'm going to go up to Distort and I'm going to hit Displace. Ten and ten, it's good for me. I mean, I don't think I've ever changed this setting. Probably should look into that. But I'm hitting Displace because I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit the same file I'm using because remember, I want that texture. And what this is going to do is going to take that graphic and um, it's going to displace it according to the texture of that graphic. And you know it was it was super subtle in this instance. You know, in some places like this Y, I get this nice little chunk out of there. I like those sections. That E's getting some good texture, um, and so and that, that's it's like those little details. You know, and if I had a heavier textured box or paper, it would a more of that. It it would just it look better. Um, and, and some of the other boxes I added more texture to where whenever I did displace it actually it, it did roughen up a little bit more but in this instance we're just going to leave it as is 
and I'm going to go through each of these. Just Command F. Just run the same filter again. Oh, I think I just did it on the other document again. Uh, displace. Select this one. Command F. Displaced it again. And they're shifting a little bit, and I can move them back, but you know, whatever, man. This is a. These are supposed to look like they're printed. Like if it's not centered, great. Better. So I've displaced all my stuff. They've got a little bit more texture to them, and you know, on your document, you can you can displace it however much or little or whatever you want. It's yours. You figure it out. So going back to where I was at earlier, I've got this red color. Holding Command, select, clicking on the thumbnail of this layer, and you can see it's taking a selection of that layer. And then I'm gonna go to down here. And I'm gonna hit Solid Color. So if there's two things you're gonna learn today that I love, it's masks and color fills. But really, they're kind of the same thing because it's just a color fill with a mask. Um, and you'll just see, you'll just see why it comes in play. I just, I just have more control on things. I can, and I, I can work quicker. Um, and I, and you're gonna find out later exactly why that is. So I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna do the same thing with these things. I need, I need want this one to be black now. Solid color. Okay. Drag that into the black folder. Now the gold one. I've got that perf. Uh, and truthfully, I don't really need to do this anymore. Uh, a lot of situations I like to preserve stuff. So Sometimes I'll create a folder that's just literally called preserve and I'll just like, keep things because you never know. In this case, I know what I'm doing. Like, I, like I've got this, I've got the process quote unquote down. I'm still trying to, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure if it's all perfect, but we're just going to keep going with it. I'm going to delete that. Cool. I've got all these things here. It looks like I haven't done anything, but I'm just laying down the foundation. So, next, I'm going to I'm going to hide this dang thing. Actually, now I can keep it on. In my dimensions, in my dimension folder. The reason I do this, I have a base graphic dimension. The base is like the box, and then the graphic is like what's printed on it, and then the dimension is like highlights, shadows, I'm going to make it look more dimensional. Um and I get part of that through, I get some of that dimension through coming here and uh, I'll, I'll change like the blend mode, make it say like, make this multiply. Um, maybe darken, I guess darken in this case. It, it all depends on the box and the colors I'm using. Um, and I get a little bit of the dimension, and I would, I would go through with most of these and do that. I guess even here, I could do that. The gold, I might not because it's just going to get really dark. So like that's not what is happening there. It's foiled on top. Needless to say, I do the dimension one on top because that's the stuff that is... I want it to, to come across on top of everything. So, I'm literally just gonna copy my base layer. I'm just gonna option and drag it into the dimension folder. And then I can start to turn this on. I turn it on and I just got rid of everything. But I'm gonna call this one darks. The reason I'm calling this darks is because I want this to be like the shadowy aspects of it, you know, bring through all those parts. Um, then on the box, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to levels and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hype this up. So I'm making these the darks. And I'm make I'm blowing out the image because I want to isolate just the dark aspects of it. I'm gonna add a gradient map to I'm gonna I need to set this to black to white. I'm doing this because I don't as I change the blend modes, I just don't want things to get all wonky. So I have a darks. Now I'm going to do the same thing, except this one's going to be the lights. And with this one, I'm going to do the inverse. I'm going to darken the shit out of it because I want, I want to isolate just the lights of it. 
and you can see I'm just getting the certain lights. And so I'll shut this off to where you can start to see what's going to happen now. Change the blend mode and I'll make this one multiply. And you can see, especially down at the bottom, it's getting dark as heck. But then I'll sort of change the opacity a little bit. I'm like, okay, it doesn't have to be like the depths of hell. It can I can lower it down to 50% and I'm starting to get some shadows now at the bottom. Same thing happens with the lights, except this one. Uh, this one, it's not like a clean cut answer. I do different stuff for, for all of them. But I'll, I'll cycle through a few things. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm on the, the move tool now. I've got nothing to I'm gonna hit shift and plus, I think. Yeah, shift and plus will start to cycle through your, your blending modes there. Um, and I sort of just hop through a few of these. I'm like, oh, color dodge? That looks pretty nice, actually. You know, it adds a little bit of saturation, but um, you're starting to get a little bit of a convincing tone. So you got something happening there. Um, and so I'll just cycle through these. I'll see what's, what options I've got. And all I'm saying is it's not many. So I'm just ruining the image. So, you know, I'm, just, I'm probably just going to end up back where I was. We'll, we'll go color dodge. Um, and the thing is, sometimes I'll do multiple of these. I'm, I'm lowering the opacity now. Because sometimes I'll add another one up on top. But then... I've got to set this back to normal so I can see what I'm doing. And, and isolate something very specific. Like, say I really want to get that highlight at the very top. I'm like, man, I always, I always want like a white section. That's what I think will be. Just nice and shimmery. So I'll just, now I've just got that top highlight. Name it. Highlight. Oops. Not height light. Highlight. And do the same thing. Maybe not overlay. Um... Color dodge. Toggle it on and off. I'm like, hmm, is that too much? Maybe go to screen. And I'm like, oh yeah, got a got a little bit of the white, not like overly saturated. Bring the opacity down just like a smidge. I'm like, killing it. So now if I toggle the dimension off, you can see it starts getting a little flat. Turn the dimension on, you're like, ooh, getting some of that texture, some of those highlights. All right. So from there. We are, what do we want to do? I want to add some noise and stuff. That's always, that's sort of the second step I go with there. So we want to add a little bit of noise. We want to start to make this look a little more convincing. Try to, you know, just bring some texture into these into these prints. And so, in each of my sections, I'm gonna I'm gonna add pretty much the same things in each of them. But uh, I usually don't do them all at once. You know, I try to work with one section at a time, and and, and just sort of get them, and then then go back and start tweaking things all together. But here in this section. We are going to add a. I'm just gonna fill this this new layer I made. Click down here, made a new layer. Then I hit Command Delete. That just fills the background with your your uh, secondary color or background color. If you do Option, yeah, Option Delete, it fills it with the foreground. Uh, so I did uh, Command. Delete just so I could get the background one. And I'm just going to show you something real quick. So you can see earlier I set up the, uh, I have the vector mask and it's containing everything. If I shut it off, you can see that it, uh, we're going everywhere. So um, I just want to highlight that so you can see what the, what the freaking point of it was earlier. Anyways, I, I just filled this. It's white. I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to go to noise and hit add noise. And this is like, pff, I don't need that much noise. 140 maybe? Like a lot of this is just like trial and error, just like figuring out if it's going to work or not. So I've added some noise. Next, I want to filter 
blur. I'm just going to do blur more. You know, it just adds a little bit of blur to it. I'll zoom in so you can actually see what's happening. Pff, crazy noise. A little bit of blur. So, filter noise, blur more. We're getting somewhere. And the one I do here now that I that tend that I find works really well for me is changing the button mode to divide. So I change it to divide, and it, you're like, how the hell does this work? But really, what I like about it is it's given me the the extremely light areas and the extremely dark areas. So if I shut that off, well, actually, what I should do is uh, I'll I'll toggle between this and normal, so you can see what's happening. Um, I guess that doesn't even help. I get, the, I just get the lights and get the darks. That's what I like. But from there, I change the the opacity to say like twenty. I don't know if that's a good number right now or not. That's probably way too much. We'll make it ten. And. So I'm just depending if I want that on darken or not. I'm trying to remember how I did this in the first place. A lot of it's just like go, 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 and just figure it out as you're doing it. I'm trying to do this in the exact process. It's, it's not as easy. So I add the noise. I can pretty much in the so in the black. Like of course I want this to look black, but if nothing prints black. Um, so I'll like change what this color is. Plus, I've got to set the multiply in that, and that red just is like filling that area. I'm trying to remember now on the other one if I if I knocked it out. I think I might have. Maybe I should. Maybe I should check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely did. Uh, you're probably like, how the hell are we gonna get here? I'm figuring out the same thing. So, well, I forgot to, I, I, same thing happened when I first made this thing. I was like, oh shoot, I want to knock out the black from the red. So I, I just hit command, uh, just command click on here, on the, on the black layer again. But I want just the damn text, so I'm holding shift and option. Um, and you, you get the little X next to the thing. So that's how you intersect the selections. But then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to come in. Oh, option backspace. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and so I just I just deleted it from there now. You can, if I shut that off, you can see that. Um, deleted that section. So, from here. Uh, I'm going to name this noise. Because sometimes I'll, I'll add multiple noise layers. You know, I'm just trying to figure out what I, what I want. I'm going to do the same thing in the black layer now, but uh, as I did that, you'll see that I just like intensified the other one, and so what I'll do sometimes with these is, in some of the earlier ones, I set the folder to have the mask, and that's great because it contains stuff, but then I started to realize like, oh, I want a mask. I just realized that sometimes I want to do a mask on top of the mask. So what I figured what I would do is I would set these to be soon as like a clipping mask. I think I'm thinking in illustrator terms, it might still be the same thing in Photoshop, but I hold option, I hover above this, and it, it sort of clips it to the layer beneath it, or the one that you just selected it to. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Oops. Oh goodness. And now you can see that it's it as I did it, it, it sort of resolved that issue where it was like getting really intense. Um, and on the black area, I can probably like actually bring up some of that noise, you know, get get some of the, bring out some of those light areas, which I like. I want it to look like, you know, they just they just kissed it real quick. They just had that print run through real quick, and that was that. And we're going to do the same thing on the gold section. Just bring this down. Um... Cool, cool. I'm sort of thinking, and the gold is a good example of, I think I had like all sorts of 
noise layers and stuff going on. You know what? Let's just, we'll just peek. We'll just try to see what the heck I was doing. Um, oops, I guess I keep that on. We'll go over to the graphic. I'm gonna go to the gold. Yeah, I had many things going up. Um, <laughs> what is some of them? I just they just like over my head. What the heck I was doing? But I did have I had um, I had a dark and a light noise filters going on these ones. And so like this one I might set to I might set it to multiply or something. Actually, you know what I want to do? I want to set a color burn. I want to get like some some saturation in there. Oh, and it's sort of canceling out because it's the exact same noise one as the one below and it's just I have like conflicting things happening. So I'm just gonna literally rotate it. Doesn't have to be 180. Um, and now you can see that it's it's not just canceling it out. Uh, I'm, I'm getting some nice texture in there now. That's looking good. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce back and forth between these two because whatever I can try to remember, the better. Um, <laughs> I want a real rough on this one. Now that I'm looking at it, and it looks cool. I dig it. I did. The reason I did that was because I added a bunch of texture to the to the 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 main box again. Whenever I save the image. But what um, what I want to do is I want to steal a few of these effects I had going on. Because, again, a lot of this stuff is just tinkering. I'm just going in there and figuring it out on the go. And then I'll just copy and use those things. And in this example, I think it's just easiest if I just steal a few things and tell you what they're doing so that way you can figure it out. And like you can... You can you could steal them for what they are or like uh, start to experiment yourself and start to figure out those things. And so I just added three effects to all of these things or like added effects to each of each of the things. And what is happening on all of them is, uh, so if I go to the red one, for instance, I open up the effects. I've got an inner shadow and satin. I'm going to shut off the satin. I'm going to go to inner shadow. If I shut it off. Um, this is like, these are like subtle things that I'm trying to like do in these things. I'm going to zoom in to where you can actually see it. If, you, if you're looking, especially around Nobody Pray, if I shut that off, you can see the inner shadow coming in. The reason I'm doing a few of these things is to sort of mimic a, that, that, you know, that screen effect. Um, you know, right around the edges, it's sort of the, the screen isn't getting pressed down all the way or, or anything like that. And then the satin is doing a similar thing. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize how wild I went with this one. Uh, <laughs> but it, um, if, I, if I bring this all the way up, you can see it more clearly. Satin is a strange, strange thing. And I'm changing the profile here, the contour, to, to one that I like. If I went linear, you'd, you'd see exactly how it goes. Um, they, they do a lot of different things. You've got to experiment with these things. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is like, oh, the, the same sort of thing. Is I, I want some more inconsistencies within the print. Um, and I, I like it along the hands and whatnot. I think it, I think it adds a good touch. Um, and I guess another thing that I can, that I can highlight here is 
whenever I was doing these, I was in, I, I was keep, I was adding a little bit of blur to each of these masks. So like, I'd, I'd bring them up to like 0 0.3. If I go to the black, you'll see it on the hand. Add this up to 0 0.3. You can start to see it feathering a little bit. Um, it's, I like it just because it doesn't feel as crazily digital. Um, especially when things are rougher, um, you're, you're still getting some jaggedness and it, it's not so, uh, so evident what, what the heck was happening. Uh, and so I've got, a, I've got a few things going on here. Um, so I showed you what was going on with the red one. The black one, I guarantee you I'm doing something gosh darn similar. I think the inner glow, I was, may have been doing the inverse. What was I doing here? Okay. Uh, same same sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to drop it. I, I'm adding an inner glow. And I'm adding some noise to it. 40%. I've got the size chalked up, you know. And it's the same thing I was saying on the red one. I just... Any inconsistency I can add to this, anything that I can do to sort of make it look like it was printed. And you gotta look at old stuff. You gotta look at how things were printed and just go for it. Um, and so I've got I've got that inner glow on there. It's subtle, but it does a trick. You know, it it just lightens up those edges. And the satin, satin's not doing anything. It's on there, but it's not really near. It's because it's overlaying, it's not black. Um, doesn't matter. But uh, the gold, so you're going to get sort of same sort of thing. Satin's on there. Um, I've got an inner glow. It's doing, you can see it lightening things up, that's for sure. And an inner shadow. The inner shadow, in this instance, um, I could have achieved a lot of this with a bevel and a boss, but I like sometimes separating them just because you can you can choose um, you can make things go in contradictory angles and make them look how you want them to look. Uh, so you just gotta get in there and play with a little bit. And so I'm starting some things are starting to shape up. Going back here, and I'm looking at this now. Looking back at this one, I didn't. I forgot how dark I had freaking made the thing. But I can let's maybe make this multiply. Like, is it going to be too dark? That's pretty good. I mean, I'll lighten stuff up later. You can you can do all sorts of freaking editing techniques and stuff later. But uh, let's just keep going in and seeing like what what we can do here. So this gold is just like absurdly bright right now. It's like this is neon gold, if that's a thing. And what I can do is I can take these darks. I'm just going to copy that dark layer and bring it down. Um, and I'm going to make it normal. I'm going to like lose everything probably. But that's okay. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to just t steal my mask, just drag it on there, and I'm going to set these to where they just go to the box because I just I don't like to play around to where it's like messing up my noise and stuff. Uh, the reason I'm doing all this is because I want a little bit of texture. And I also just want to try to like, just attempt to bring down some of that intensity. So I'm going to filter through. Honestly, like, you might like look at this and you're like, that looks dumb. But I look at it and I'm like, you know, if I drop that down to 10%, I might be good. You know, I might get some like cool oranges in there. And even now you're probably like, nah, it's still not getting where you want it to. But it's like, I'm like, you just gotta, you just gotta tinker, man. You gotta tinker. Um, 
I'm gonna duplicate that one again. Let's kind of label it color burn. I can't even read these things, but I like to just know what's going on. Um, you know, I'm just gonna go to multiply. I saw it earlier, I saw it darkening things up, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I like to start down at 10 and then just work my way up. When I hit a point where I'm like, okay, I've gone too far, and then I start to go back. But it's helpful. Look at this. It's starting to look a little more, more realistic. And then later, I can start to add some highlights and whatnot. You know, start to, start to uh, spice things up. So maybe I'll do that right now. I'll, I'll add a layer. And I can't do my little clip masking because I want this above all these things. I just, so I'm just going to throw a mask on here. Call this highlight. And, you know, I just want like, I just want like a high, like a beam and highlight, like straight down here. Um, as if I just took this photo and like did not, I had like zero concern for like how it was lit. Oops. Um, and what I'm going to do up here at the gradient, I'm going to get it towards like this reverse. Uh, not reverse, but um, I just reflected gradient. There we go. Just throw it on here. Just make it a little bigger. I don't know. Uh, this is going to be my highlight spot. Maybe rotate it some more. Oh, goodness. Let me just, just kind of redraw it. Get a little rotation in there. Now we're talking. Set that to overlay. We're getting a nice highlight in here. But I want it to be real subtle. You know, like, because it's looking like pretty darn flat in there. Just add a little bit of that highlight. 20. I'm even wondering if 20 is too much. Whatever. We'll keep it. Uh, we're getting somewhere. You know, things are happening. But some of these things, like, they just need more intensity. This black, this is like, this is hella faded. I'm just gonna steal it. You know, I said this one to be dark earlier. Let's just steal it. Set it to multiply, maybe? What's happening? Night and day, getting somewhere. Um, all right, we're moving. We're getting. We're doing something. And you know what? Like, there's a lot. There's way more going on than what I'm like going through. <laughs> Some of these things just like aren't as convincing as they can be. And I guess maybe before I move on, I'll, I'll I can showcase a little bit of that stuff. Um, okay, you know, I changed my mind. We're, we'll come back. <laughs> We're just going to keep moving. Keep moving. So, um, I, I think one thing that, like, you, you see, like, where it's at right now, the box is pretty flat. It's like, all like craziness going on. You look over here, and this thing looks like it's been to like Vietnam. Um, I think that's like one of the reasons people were want to know about these. Are like, how are you like getting these effects? How you? And like, it's funny because like these scratches and stuff, and it's like, yeah, this, I mean, I think it looks pretty real at times. You know, I mean, I made it, so like, there's part of it is like, it's not real at all. Uh, but I think to when you're seeing it for the first time, you're not like really convinced, like, wow, do you just have all these textures? But um, I'm gonna go through on the other document and show you that really it's just brushes. And I'm just, just sort of scratching it up myself. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do right now. I think that's gonna like add a different dynamic to this. Um, and man, I really darkened up with this thing. But I think later I'm gonna add some nice, I'm gonna edit the photo a little bit. We're gonna get it where we want. So, so this is noise. This is dark noise. This is also dark noise. So, all right, I can start to start to close some of this up. 
And this is where we're going to get into the masks. That's why I love them. I'm going to add a mask right now. And what I'm going to do is, so I added a mask to graphics. So I put all these things in a graphic folder because I'm sort of imagining if this is like a box, like, and it's printed already, and it like, exists as like a single thing, if you scratch it, it's probably going to scratch up everything. But sometimes you might just have like one ink that's a little more smeary or something, and that's why I, I separate all of them. I can, I can control them all each. But I put them all in a single graphic folder it's because when I go to add some of this texture, I add it globally, but then sometimes I go in individually to these ones and add them as well. But first, we're going to start global. We're going to go to brushes. And man, I feel I've gone this far. Maybe I'll put a note at the beginning or something, but like, I use Kyle Webster brushes. And if you've got the new Photoshop, like, see the Creative Cloud, then you also probably have them. I, I'll be honest in saying I've never, like, had to go through and find them, but I just, I just use the ones I already have. Um, the Kyle Webster brushes are incredible. If you don't know about Kyle Webster, look them up. I would say to go buy his brushes, but you can't now. They're just a part of Adobe. Shout out to Kyle Webster for like making that deal happen because he had a mega pack. I'm just gonna open this real quick. Look at these are all Kyle Webster brushes. Like Jesus Christ. Um, I bought a mega pack. I got the half tone one as well, and I bought it like $15. Straight up, I would have I would have spent two hundred dollars on these brushes, like mad respect to Kyle because these things are incredible. Uh, I'm not like saying like oh whatever tools and whatever you have like do the work for you, but pff, these things save me so much damn time. It's absurd. Uh, I'm just gonna go into like I use I'm gonna use like two brushes in this whole thing, and I have like a million here, but I have two that I like, and I'm gonna stick to them. Uh, I'm in the I'm in the ink box. We're gonna go down to deliciously dry brush. This thing is the bomb. Uh, I just wanna make a new layer just so you can see what the frick it does. Put this above everything. Set to black. So I I'm using a Wacom too. Man, if you're using a mouse or a trackpad, you need to <laughs> you need to go buy a Wacom or something. I've been using a Wacom since I was in seventh grade. Seventh grade. These things are incredible. Uh, I wish I could say this was like a sponsored thing, but it's not. I, that same one I had, I got rid of like a couple years ago. I had that thing for like, I don't even know, 11 years or something stupid. Maybe not 11, but uh, it was close to that. I had that thing forever. Anyways, I'm using a Wacom brush, or Kyle Webster Deliciously Dry Brush from the ink. From the ink box I'm using a wacom because that way i can be pressure sensitive you know push down real hard and get that little heaviness push down nice and soft and i can come back and uh get some little tiny lines so that's what i'm using i'm gonna go into the graphic and i have this mask because if i draw in here i'm just erasing stuff and the good thing about that is then i hit I hit X, you look over here, hitting X, I'm alternating between my things. I'm literally just, I keep my finger hovering above it. And I'm just going back and forth, just like drawing, erasing, drawing, erasing. So let's just like, let's, I'll just show you what the heck I do so I don't have to like demonstrate. Like up at the tops, edges and stuff, like, those are vulnerable areas. Hey, you know, those have like the most scratches whenever I'm like making these things. Cause I feel like it makes logical sense for them to be scratched up. So I'll come in here and I'll start to like scratch things up. Um, and I'm pretty careless, you know, like, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And in fact, like you can't, I can't get the effects I go for in like a single brush. I, I always have to come back and like erase things because it's just like the nature of like this inconsistent look that I'm looking for. Um, and then there's, I'm just not gonna get it off the first try. You know, I just gotta come back to it. Um, but before I sort of go back in, I just wanna like zoom in so you can see it. You can see, pff, look at this thing scratched, cool. Um, but it's like pretty darn sharp. 
It's a little too sharp for my liking. So I'm going to go into the mask, same thing I did earlier, add some feather to it, 0.4. It all depends on the size of your document. It's another reason I'm working so large. If I was working at half the size, I wouldn't be able to do half these things. Like, it just wouldn't, you know, I'd just be losing a lot of that detail. So let's go back in here. Like this section, like the, like it looks absurd how much is being taken out. I'll come back in. Just sort of start to touch it up. Um, and it's just a process of this. Like figuring out what to what to keep. What to get rid of, what to keep. You can get rid of everything. It's just a matter of like, okay, how much do I keep of it now? Um, and I think I, that's how you're gonna get the, the convincing results. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like, super detailed with this stuff because the fact of the matter is this is a dang tutorial and you're going to do it however the hell you want to do it and I've already done it so if, if I were making a new box maybe I would be like more cautious with it but I'm not so uh, I'll start to come through I'll, I'll just, like add scratches and stuff to, to things. And this is just, just play around, man. Just, just scratch things up, and I and that's and that's something I'll do too. I'll find a section. I'm like, all right, let's just like imagine this thing was just like someone set a grinder on this darn thing, and it was just like going at it, um, and it's got this. You just like find a uh, a pattern. And then you come back in and you make it real subtle. And then it, it's going to look natural. Because it'll look like someone sat on this and like rotated to go talk to Billy to their right or something. And didn't realize that they just like ruined this sweet matchbox. You know, maybe over here it's got some more. I mean, you get the idea. And so I'll do this. I'll go through these. And sometimes, like, just the gold, just the gold needs to, like, be removed from a section. So I'll come in and... And th this one I especially, like, went and was, like, pretty adamant about how I did this one. Um, because, it, like, this is foiled, man. This thing's, like, sitting on top. It's not like mixing in there, so I figured like, you know, parts might get chipped away um, and whatnot. And so that's what I was doing. I was just kind of coming in, just having fun. Finding out what works, what doesn't. What to keep, what to get rid of. Um, I'll do the same thing in the blacks. So I'll show another brush now. Go to the black. And in this section, I want it to. I want it to look a little, a little more faint, right in the centers spots. And so, one that I like of Kyle's again is this natural sponge. And what's cool with this sponge is like it like every time I click, the thing is like changing direction. It's like unpredictable. And that's one thing I love about it is what I'm trying to get, what I'm trying to achieve. And a lot of this stuff is like unpredictable, like situations. You know, you might be looking at this and you're like, "No, this does not look realistic at all." Um, but again, it's another case of come back in and see what to keep. So now I'll just kind of click in here. I'll go through, and it's like I kind of draw back over, and I just end up with like very faint areas uh, like little, little little lines and whatnot and it's um just makes it feel a bit more convincing you know and the thing is what i might do is uh well one thing i do need to do here is to add some feather to this and then come back in just 
just, you know, go for it. Some of them are like way too heavy and whatnot. And, you know, you just, you just find what works for you, what looks good. You know, and sometimes, dude, I might end up with like four pixels worth of spec. And I'm sitting there for like half an hour. I'm like, this is perfect. And it's just like the nature of it. Just like figuring it out. What do you keep? What do you get rid of? And, you know, I'm just going like, to call it. Call it there. There's <laughs> there's so much that goes into, like, each of these. Um, maybe in the red I'll show another technique that I used. And I'm going to go back into the other file. I mean, I'll shut off every layer, turn them on by one, by one by one. You can see exactly what was going on. Um, but on this red thing, another thing I would do is similar uh, similar situation. I don't want this. I want this one. I just don't want it to like, adhere to the same properties as the noise. So on this white layer, I'm going to go filter, render, clouds. What I like about also I'm going to add I'm going to go noise and noise. Turn it down. Uh, filter, blur, then blur it. You know, you gotta get that blur in there. Um, and the whole point of this is because I'm like thinking, man, I just want this box to look like it's been sitting in a garage. Uh, there's been oily things around, you know, there's humidity, it's, it's warping a little bit. And so, when I have this thing off, that red is pretty darn solid. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this back on, and maybe I'll go to multiply. Is color burn too much? Let's find out. Definitely seems like too much. Um, multiply is probably fine. I'll I'm going to check divide real quick. Mm, I, I kind of do want to lighten things up. I don't know. So I, I set this divide. Let's just let's just roll with it. Set it to divide, and I just want some spottiness to it. That's all. I'm gonna bring down this, and it seems like absurd, but like, I'll be like three percent. Butter. And I like toggle it on and off. And you're like, man, almost nothing happened. But hey, it did something. Yeah, just a little bit. Because later, when I go to, I add some photo effects and whatnot, um, it'll, it'll just make it, uh, th that, that'll show through, you know, when I add some of those effects later. And that's, that's what I'm going to do now. Um, once again, I, just, I say I skipped over things. But really, it's just like a lot of, the things I've already talked about, a lot of like trying new noise filters, adding some textures, stuff like that. Um, and I'm gonna go through the other file, but for the time being, I'm gonna group these two together. I'm gonna, enable, I'm gonna name this uh, working. I'm gonna duplicate these again. And this one's gonna be flat. Now you can get to see what I'm talking about when I've got a working on a flat uh, layer system going on here. This is already set to multiply, so if I were to add a color, Beneath all of this, because um, that was the thing too. I just didn't know how the heck I wanted to set up, how I wanted to present everything. I was just like taking everything into consideration. Uh, so I set it up. You know, if I want colored backgrounds, it's got the shadow. It's already knocked out. It's not like I got a white border around it or anything. And I'm like good to go from there. Um, that's just like another tidbit, something to keep in mind as you as you might tinker with stuff. But back to sort of where we're at. Um, I've got this folder. I've got all my sheet in it. I'm just going to hit Command E. It's going to just merge all these layers. So again, I hit Command E. Just merged everything within that, within that folder. And I'm going to... Oops. I create a new layer. I'm selecting both of these. I'm doing Command E again. The reason I'm doing that is because, like, I just want to get rid of that vector mask. I love the vector mask, but uh, it actually came in, you know, 
bit me in the butt, you know, a few times. Dragging into other folders or files, scaling things, forgetting that there's like a, a blur on it. Um, and so I'm just, I'm just doing it now. And what I'm going to do is go to the filter. I'm going to filter here and go to camera raw filter. And I'm doing this because I'm going to add some, oh, before I do this, sorry, 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 cancel. I'm going to duplicate this file, this, this layer, that is. The reason I'm duplicating this, I'm going to name it filtered. This one will be OG. The reason I'm doing this is because if I'm adding a camera filter, I want to, like, be able to toggle back and forth and make sure, hey, okay, the decisions I made were, like, good and didn't, like, jeopardize the quality of the photo. So well, sometimes I'm, like, I'll make some adjustments and I'm, like, I probably made too many adjustments, and I'll just like lower the opacity on it, which I'm probably gonna do here. So I did on almost all the all the matches I did, and you know what? I'm gonna hit auto because I'm gonna trust this system. It's gonna do whatever it wants, and like, oh, scrubby zoom, the worst. Ah, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> oh God, I hate scrubby zoom with a passion. Obviously, this thing is like, it's really saturated and all that. Um, I maybe need a little bit of it. I'm going to hit OK. And this is like exactly what I'm talking about. I'm like, OK, this looks kind of cool. But maybe I can tone it down a little bit. So I'll go to the opacity. I'll start to lower it. Because then I can toggle that off. And I'm like, OK, yeah, that was a little bland. Add this in there. It's like, oh, that's good. Maybe like. Lower it down like ten more percent. Good to go from here, and I could, I could flatten those down if I want. I preserved a lot of them because, like, you never know what setting I might need to change stuff. Um, I don't know, man. That's the box. I mean, I feel like I touched on most of the stuff there. I've just vectored things, brought them in, did some stuff. That sums it up, right? The text, the, the damn text. I just drew it in glyphs. If I could vector everything in glyphs, I would. I try to. I just did a logo mark in glyphs because I love it so much. Um, so I literally just made <laughs> the four letters. I guess you could say five because I'm here. I may as well make an I. Uh, so I made, I made these, typed them out in Illustrator, uh, expanded it, and went from there. The other text, what am I using here? Can't remember. A lot of things I use Termina um, and Rift. Shout out to Maddox Schuller of Fort Foundry. He's going to have a new site launching soon. So um, we can just look back over here. I mean, these aren't like, you know, like, wow, Matt, you just recreated the other one. Uh, there's obviously differences here. Um, a lot of it's just trial and error, man. You just gotta figure it out. Like I, I'll shut things off. I'm like, I don't even know what is happening. Uh, but I, I name things the best I can, so that like I can have at least a little bit of a clue. Um, and what what else do I got going on here? I've I so in the dimension. I have lights, darks, and a highlight. Those are the th those are the things you saw earlier. I'll shut all those off to they're like not there. And you can, I mean, that's, that's a hell of a difference there. I tr turn those on and shut them off. Um, just just the dimension of the box helps so much. Um, but the ones I have on here that you didn't see previously was I added an additional highlight because I'm like, man, I just want I just want to get real fine with it. Slightly added in there some more. And then uh, I added these creases over here. I probably just Googled like folded paper or something. I just like took a small snippet of it and uh, threw it in there. This is like a small detail that adds some highlights in there. They just make it a little more convincing, you know? Just, just make the people believe it. But, it. but everything else, man, it's... 
I'm just doing the same thing. I've got my mask here. If I shut it off, um, on this one, I I shut it off and didn't look at anything. It's because I I did a lot of it on the individual layers here. Uh, and you can see the reds turning on, and now it looks now now it looks a little more convincing. Same thing with the black. So. That's that, y'all. That's how I did it. I'm trying to think. I mean, I have I have different, all sorts of different ones here that I had done. Uh, you know, before before we go, okay, y'all saw this. You can, if, if you want to check out any of these Photoshop files, and you can send me an email. If you can't find my website. Google and Maddie Matt or something. It's hello at maddiematt.co. You can email me if you want to see a Photoshop file, whatever. Not, I'm not gonna be secretive about this stuff. If you want to do something, you know, I'll show you whatever. Okay, that's why I'm making this video. But uh, I feel like it'd be cool to show some some reference imagery I was looking at whenever I was doing this. You know, um, and and this is this stuff is definitely important too because it helped me get a grasp on like printing techniques and like just generate ideas and like find stuff that's cool um i didn't like i was hoping i could maybe like steal some textures and stuff from some of these but they just like weren't the sizes i wanted um and you just gotta you just gotta dig around man find some cool stuff see get, gain some inspiration uh I mean, I'll show you. I'll open up two things. You can see, I want to be as transparent about this stuff as possible. I don't want to like try to act like I'm some guru or whatever. Uh, I want to share. I want to share the needed gritty. I want to share the, share the truth. You know, I'm just trying to find a freaking image that I referenced when I was making one of these. All right, so I'm gonna open this. This is one of the images. I was like, I saw this. And I was like, this is sick. I was like, I want to steal everything here. Uh, I stole a little bit of it. I'll tell you that. When I go to let's go to the output. Flower boy. This one, I was like, I was like, if I could make this look like this, I would. And like, I'm doing this stuff in a day. Is like. I could probably make it look damn well close to this, but I'm doing it as quick as I can. Um, and, you know, so here I was looking at a lot of the technique that's happening. I'm like, let's see if I can get this kind of close. I didn't want to like, I don't have to over explain stuff. This inspiration, cool. So, I don't know, y'all. I, I should just end this video. You got any more questions? Something wasn't clear? whatever just let me know and uh yeah check out manila folders if you like music i mean i'd be hyped if you went and read about some of these albums you know and, and the damn one is sort of it gets kind of deep related to a poem it's cool anyway y'all that's all i've got Maybe I'll, I'll sign off. So, if you want to find me on the internet, find me at, oh, I don't even know my stuff. Here we go. Matty Matt. I mean, Instagram and Twitter, I guess. You can probably find my dribble same way. Got any questions? You can just email me. Uh, MaddieMatt.co is my website. You can find my email on there too. I've already said it like three times. And Manila folders, man. I'm really bad at like pushing stuff, but uh, I guess I may as well push this. MaddieMatt.co. I've been posting stuff for a long time. 
No folders are just started. These are both weekly things. Share blog posts on Matty Matt uh, about design, creativity, and things like that. No folders uh, is sort of my my fun outlet right now. I just wanna I just wanna share cool stuff, cool music, love music. MattyMatt.co. So this is what I'm talking about, y'all. Come in here, subscribe. Just type your email in. Look at this. Articles on articles, y'all. Uh, I think part of the reason I'm putting this in here is because like every day I'm like, I should just stop doing this. Today is one of those days. So I think putting it in here is like making me like, okay, I got to keep doing this because I just shared it with the freaking world. Anyways, y'all, that's all I've got. Thanks for tuning in. It was fun. You got requests or whatever? You want to see something? Let me know. That's all I've got. That's all she wrote.